Hello everyone, I'm Adam Papagan. Welcome to the ASMR talk show. ASMR stands for Autosensory Meridian Response, if that wasn't uh, obvious. And, uh, you know, the sounds that uh, make a little tingle in your brain and uh, cause you to uh, maybe feel good while you're also feeling good about the uh, information we're giving to you. Uh, earlier uh, in the control room, Jared, who works on the show, was saying, Adam, you never talk about being a tour guide. You never promote your tours on the show. Uh, a, I do. He's obviously not paying uh, good enough attention. Uh, but well, something that happened recently, actually, I had planned on talking about. So occasionally I'll get hired to do private tours, um, which, you know, you just drive some people around who can afford to be driven around all day. So it pays pretty well, and it's usually pretty chilled out. But uh, it's, you know, whatever people from any part of the world, so I'd be like an upper class person. Um, they hire the guide or whatever. And so you meet all different people. I would say 98% of the tours I give, uh, people are excited, they're happy, and uh, you know, even if we maybe you know wouldn't get along if we met outside of this circumstance, uh, it, you know, it's still a good time. Other times, I just really don't click with the people, and um, I don't, you, know, you don't know if it's a cultural thing or if they really just are sort of like a bummer kind of people. But last Friday, these two Malaysian guys hired me and they were like, uh, hey, we are, we're only in LA for one day. We want to go to Warner Brothers Studio, but just to the outside to take a picture so people will think we went. And then we want to go to Universal Studios, but just to the outside to get a picture. We don't need to go in. We just want people to think we went. And then uh, can you take us to the Citadel Outlet Mall? So I was like, yeah, sure. So they hired me for 10 hours to go. Four of those hours were spent at the mall. Thankfully, I didn't have to do anything. Uh, but this outlet mall out here in the outskirts of LA, I, I've never been to you know, buy that kind of stuff, uh, but it's like mostly foreign tourists because American luxury goods are taxed really, really heavily in other parts of the world. So all these people come from all over the world and you know instead of seeing Hollywood Boulevard or Beverly Hills or the beach or you know one of these you know things LA is known for they just want to spend it at the outlet mall and the uh, joke is really on them because everything at the outlet mall is out of style uh, a uh, and B the money that they saved on the stuff they had to pay me to drive them there and do the whole thing so really I don't understand uh, what the uh, point of this was. Um, that being said, I am planning a trip to Kuala Lumpur, and I do plan on heading up the outlet mall while I'm there. So if you know of any good uh, tour guides, just send them my way. Folks, my guest tonight, prolific voice actor, apparently a Dodger fan too. Please welcome Ezra Weiss. Thank you so much, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. So uh, I'm we'll- Enjoying it. Oh, wow, okay, okay. It's off to a great start. Yep. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. How did you get into voice acting? Because that's one of those jobs that like probably less than a few hundred people ever in the history of time right. have ever done this job. Yeah. Once you get into it, you just do like a bunch of voices. Well, it started off as being a, a theater major in Valencia here in California at a place called Cal Arts. Ah, uh, okay. You've heard of it? Everyone I've ever met who went there was talented. Oh, that's sweet. Would you say that well, that's... since we just met, uh -huh. at the end of the interview, you let me know if you think I'm one of those... No, I think so, for sure. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I went there to get my degree in theater. Um, Cal Arts is known as California Institute of the Arts. It's a full and proper title. And I came from New Jersey to go to school out here in the West and got my theater major and I was doing a summer program, big outdoor theater, big boys, lots of different characters, so much fun. And a lot of post-production companies are in Valencia because the land is cheap. And one of the post-production companies that were there were for Saban Entertainment. You know Saban? Oh yeah. So for any of your viewers who don't know Saban, Saban was um, credited for bringing um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Did you ever see that? Oh yeah, big fan. For real? When I was like six, yeah. Who's your favorite ranger? Well, 
it was originally the Red Ranger was my favorite. Everybody and then, loves Red no, Ranger. No, because then they got the Green Ranger, and That's he was right. the best. He's and amazing. Then and the White Ranger was the best one. Racist. I don't, I don't see what's the problem with I have like a white ranger or a blue I ranger. I say with a smile, just so that we can take some of the stigma yeah. away from the word racist. No. Well, okay. Well, people, some stigma might be. People yeah. put, you think a little bit of it is A little good? stigma with the racism I think is maybe good. Yeah, people are calling each other racist too quickly nowadays. Yeah. It's like, you don't know what I mean. I don't mean white race ranger, I meant yeah. White Ranger. That's the color of his uniform. That's it. Yeah. Although anyway, it was weird that the Black Ranger was a black guy, though, and the Yellow Ranger was an Asian lady. That's only in a sketch. That's a Key and Peele sketch you're thinking. No, in the, the original series. It's true. Racist. Yeah. On Saban. Oh, Saban's racist. Yeah, not yeah. you. They're just lazy, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also lazy, yeah. right? But they were probably trying to get, like, the Skittles of yeah, casting. Right. Right? Get every color represented somehow. Did they have a brown ranger? The red ranger actually may have been Hispanic. He had dark hair. Yeah. So he might have he was he was a little like vaguely ethnic. Yeah. But like you couldn't really identify. No, yeah, he could have been Italian, he could have been yeah. yeah. Italian. That's how they used yeah. to do casting. For Welcome Back Cotter. It's like, well we want to have an eclectic group. So, a bunch of white kids, black kids, Italian. And Italian. Italian. Yeah. Come from. So I was doing this outdoor theater program, big show, and in the audience sat the director for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers post-production sound. And he said, hey, Ezra, you got a really fun voice. You did such a great job up on that stage. Do you ever do voiceover before? I said, yes, but if I'm, sp if I'm telling you the truth, Adam, the answer's no. Yeah. You I've never say, done any. Yeah, you should just say, yeah. When, when they give you an opportunity, when the opportunity knocks, mm -hmm. you don't say, no one's home, because an opportunity's like, you're an idiot, I just heard you're home, and now I'm leaving. So I said yes, which was kind of a lie, but also wasn't because CalArts also has animation students. Right. It's like known as the Disney nursery for animators. Yep. So I had some animator friends. They used to do projects. They would say, because I used to do a lot of improv, comedy, theater, obviously, and they said, you want to do some voices for these original characters? I said, sure. So I did some, but it wasn't like in a studio, the microphone, and all the technology of like cueing me to my lines. So I went into the studio after I lied and said yes, and they booked me. They said, all right, stand here, and we're gonna beep you in. And I'm like, I don't know what these beeps mean. Do you, have you ever done any voiceover mm -hmm. before? Yes. You have? Nice one. Racist. So it went beep, 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 and then I did my line. I just said racist is a callback. Yeah, I didn't I mean know, to offend yeah, you. Yeah, 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 Did I yeah, offend yeah. you? No, of course not. I want to get off on the right start. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to offend you. <laughs> you so that's how yeah. it started. I did a bunch of Power Ranger voices, a ton of them. All these like monsters like the of villains. the episode yeah. guys. Monster of the Week. I'll get you Power Ranger. Ah. And they would like, they would never have any of the fight stuff written. So it was always like watch the screen and improvise. So, as you recall, every episode went like this. I'm a big monster. Power Rangers, I'm threatening the universe. Power Rangers would always be like, nuh -uh. I'd be like, yeah. Then we'd fight. And small. Go, right. You'd fight small. Fight small at first. But then. And then it would be like, you transform and get super big. And they turned into well, like the power the Rangers. Megazoid. The, they, have, they have trick up their sleeve. They combine. They, yeah. And they got okay, giant. The, why did they need the individual Zords to combine into one? Because it, it, they never used the individual robots against the bad guy. Right. It always just went straight to the Megazord. Because the individual is never as strong as the team, or some garbage like that. Okay. But, but yeah, but I, the only real reason is because the transformation is the coolest. 
And the, Nobody uh, cares about the worm or the butterfly. We love watching it come out of the, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's okay. like, like, oh, I see the transformation. So watching them all interlock and like change and get all like, oh. Same thing with the monster, except the monster would always have to die or lose. I'm not gonna say racist anymore, by the way. I just decided in my head, don't do racist anymore. So the joke's dead. Okay. But then, when the monsters would die, you couldn't make them sound like they died. Like they couldn't like have their last death rattle. Do you have a death rattle? Not yet. You know, like, eventually. Uh, uh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> So, no, no, that's why it's too much gum. You gotta let it vapor out. Let it vapor out. I like that. Too no, much. Too oh. much. It's too right, much. Well, oh. you're the you're the you're the it's pro. Too much. So the, you couldn't do it like that. You yeah. just kind of had to be like like you did. Like <laughs> that's it. Because it was a kid show and they didn't want death. They only wanted defeat. No bodily part jokes. Even though I said defeat. Yeah. Racist. Yes. Right. Softly. Yeah. Well, then you did. Uh, Do you like chocolate? Are you allergic to chocolate? Uh, no, I'm not allergic to anything. Would you like a chocolate with me? Yeah. I brought some. Yeah, let's do it. I figured. You got a whole a bag of stuff here. Well, I know that I like ASMR. Okay. So I'm really honored to be on your talk show. Yeah. And I have some friends who find ASMR to be particularly soothing for them. Like, they'll watch this show as they go to bed, and they're like, oh, the tingles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh yeah. So I thought, let's, like friends, eat together, but also let's stay in the theme of your show, okay. which is great. And let's eat a Nestle Crunch Bar. Ooh. Have you ever? A Crunch Bar, of course. On your show? No. So it's got crunch. Yeah. But if we unwrap the wrappers and then crunch on the chocolate, magic. Yeah. I brought one for yes, you. Thank you. It Didn't melted work. in my car because it Fun was size. hot today. Because I don't want to make too much of your show about the eating chocolate. Yeah. yeah. But this is good because we don't always do the sounds. Really? Yeah. People prefer the sounds. I know. There's certain genres of ASMR that I'm learning about. With the crinkles and stuff. Well, some people love the crinkles, and some people hate the eating. Well, I'm at a level with you. Yeah, mine too. I melted. I'm at a level with you, Ezra. The ASMR thing is really more of a gimmick. What? Yeah. I had a root canal yesterday. Mm. That's enough. Oh, good. Oh. Oh, my God. I don't know. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, thanks for the chocolate. Did you do a... Uh, so I, I imagine you parlayed the Power Ranger thing mm -hmm. into the anime thing. I did. Easily. It's already translating. Uh, so the, the, what was interesting, you hear about the anime from Japan. You know, it's big there and the creators of it and stuff. You hear about the fan culture of the anime, but I've never heard of the working stiff Americans' perspective on it. Right. Were you into anime at all? Have you ever heard of it? I've Was only it heard of anime from like what I would see in terms of the exposure of the cartoons that would be just airing after school when I was growing up. Usually Speed Racer. Yeah, Voltron. Maybe, but yeah. I wouldn't know it. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't know it you by know that its it was name, a thing. but I always enjoyed Fred Flintstone, George Jetson. You know those shows, Flintstones, mm -hmm. Jetsons. Jetsons yeah. I mean, I also really liked shows that were in syndication, like Gilligan's Island, Adam's Family, Munsters, Brady Bunch, live action shows. But I was a kid, so Scooby-Doo, your Saturday morning lineup. But when the anime would come on, I'd be like, ah, oh, this. You did too, right? A little bit? There's just something a little, uh, 
the, the pacing of, I don't know. It's a, if you didn't, you would be an anime fan already. You'd be like, yeah, I loved it. But we're like. There's something a little, not, creepy is not the right word. A little, were you into Pokemon? Only because it was a, as a fad. You got, you had to. I had to. To, to, to survive to in elementary know. school. But right. like, I would watch it, like, what the hell is this? Right. Yeah, that's usually. Same. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm watching it because I'm a child and it's animated, so I feel like it's mine. Yeah, and then other kids are like, no, this is great. Big show from Japan. I don't know. So anime kind of like was whatever for me, even when I was working on it, up until I saw Miyazaki's Spirited Away. Yeah, well, that's like a crossover one. Because the made storytelling into, yeah. and the sort of spectacle of it all, the epic tale inside the story. So I was like, and it was one of those animes that I felt like I could really watch and be a part of and feel instead of like removed and just sort of looking at. And that's what most of anime was. And I've done, prior to my exposure to the Miyazaki moment, Miyazaki was my aha moment. If we're gonna talk about like for anime, prior to that, I had worked on a bunch of different anime titles that the anime fans are really excited about. And I'm like, I voiced it. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, you just read it the, like a couple times. They'll come to me and they'll be like, can you sign this DVD? Because you voice blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God, what was it like working on that show? I'm like, it was a great day. <laughs> it's a couple hours I've I'm like, I don't, I don't really, yeah. I did what the director asked. I, they told me about what I needed to know for my character. I delivered it well. I moved on to the next job. Because it's a gig economy way back when I started in the 90s. If you're going to be an actor, you're always living in a gig economy. It's not just new with Uber. It always is for an actor, you know? Like, waiting tables is always the joke. Mm. But I never waited tables as an actor. Like, once I graduated from CalArts, I never waited tables, but I found other jobs. I was a birthday party clown. And I would like get dressed up in different outfits like Batman and Mr. Incredible. I hated it, but I loved the performing of it. Mm -hmm. I would um, I would do corporate events where I'd do like improv for the corporate events. That was pretty degrading, mm -hmm. even though it's a huge audience. All kinds of, oh, the most degrading job I ever had, thanks for asking, is they wanted me to be a funny guy in an elevator at one of the downtown LA buildings when they were renovating them for like, you know, they, they sort of like would refurbish an old rundown building and repurpose it with fancy single bedroom or two bedroom and then on the bottom commercial property on the corner of 8th and Broadway. The building is called the Chapman and they wanted me to be in the elevator because only the fifth floor was done. So they wanted to bring all the investors up to the fifth floor, and then they would look at the models. And they wanted me to be a jackass in the elevator, making them laugh so when they got to the fifth floor, they could then be in a good mood to possibly purchase. So I was entertaining only for like 90 seconds. Did they, was there any like um, explanation like, oh, this guy is supposed to be here telling jokes? Like, did they, nope, they didn't it was know. like, I'm the elevator. And I wasn't in a costume or anything. I was like, okay, next tour group, come on into the elevator of seven or eight of you. Blink, hey, welcome to the Chapman. I'm Ezra. This is almost over. I'm going to be whatever. So, so, I made it up every time because I'm an improviser. But it was difficult because some other colleagues of mine showed up because they have money to buy the property. And like, hey Ezra, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> hey everybody, my name's Ezra and I'm taking you to the fifth floor where you get, and I was like, oh, it's a terrible job. Yeah. It was terrible. But until the voiceover thing picked up, you do what you do. You do what you gotta do. You're a tour guide? Yeah. In what way? Uh, sightseeing tours. Like all around Los Angeles? Yeah, uh, my specialties are the O.J. Simpson tour, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills tour, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm tour will be done pretty soon, and uh, I got a Vanderpump Rules tour I'm working on as well. Is that but your company, or do you work for a company? No, no, Cool LA Tours is the company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you like that I it? Work, that I work, that it's my company though, yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah. 
your company's yes. cool LA tours. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's like, what are some cool tours? Nice. Well, here's a four or five of them that they give. I had so. to do a cool tour where somebody was getting married. And for their party, their sort of before the wedding party, all the out-of-towners, they wanted me to be a tour guide as they rented one of those exclusive black vanny things yeah. with the bar in it and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, to go from Santa Monica through downtown yeah. and mm -hmm. Hollywood and then back to Santa Monica. Yeah. And I put together a mixtape of songs that were like Los Angeles or Hollywood themed. Did a lot of work for that one-time thing. They did pay a lot of money though. Yeah, it can. It can they be gave good. me like a grand. Oh wow! I, I got that tour. Yeah, but they made money. I mean, they yeah. were rich people. Okay, that's your bread and butter as I, a tour guide. It, it would have been good. If yeah, it, I would have stuck with that. Yeah, you, it's you don't work like that every day though. It's, it's one of those kinds. That's of, the same thing, as right? being, you know. But it's but it's a gig. When the gig happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but enough about me. Okay. And my cool I just found that interesting uh, because at first I thought you were a Universal Studios tour guide. No. Because I, I used to do Universal oh, Studios. Oh, I've been to the. I went to the casting call I think twice. Yeah. When they did it, it's a big cattle call thing. Huge. Yeah. And it was fun. Anytime I've ever gone to one of a cattle call type thing, yeah. they take one look at me and they're like, "Well, not you. Not you, of course not. <laughs> you. Come you know on. why you're a trailblazer? You don't blend into corporate. Yeah. And that's what you should always be. Okay, well, I don't have a choice at this point. Yeah, so, that's a good point. <laughs> I have to, you know. You have to. You have to play the but cards yeah, but you don't. But you don't want to be absorbed into neutral. Yeah, but look, Do I you? mean, no, but, but look, you're like pretty conventionally good looking, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you're real behind the scenes or whatever, but obviously, like, that being like an actor y looking guy. I've never gotten real work as an actor. Like I've never made any never of a commercial my bread or anything. No, I've been in a couple commercials, yeah, but I yeah. never made. But they never aired. I booked them, and then they never aired, or they were just for the movie theater. Like for instance, here's the commercial I booked for Pepsi. Huge campaign was supposed to maybe be Super Bowl. As a caveman, so they did the whole thing with my eyebrows, the nasty mm -hmm. teeth. Yeah, I went out into the desert in a loincloth, yeah, that was it. And then they never showed it. Well, as we're running out of time, but Great. you brought a mask. I brought several. So let's, let's get to the masks. Great. Um, you mentioned anime. Yeah. So I, I like masks, not just because an actor likes masks, but I think they're fun. So I'm going to put this one on. Okay. Hello, anime character. That's a weird mask. My name is Satsuki. My name is Satsuki. That's pretty, yeah, this is, this is an odd. Where do you get a mask like that? You would find a mask like this at an anime convention most often. Yeah. You can't breathe very well in this one. See how small the mouth is? I don't know if you can. Yeah, I can barely can you hear see? you. The problem with her beautiful face is the rest of me. Like, I'm disgusting compared to her face. Yeah. You know what I mean? I made up the name Satsuki. Literally, once I put the mask on, I was like, damn it, Ezra, think of names that are authentic. Satsuki? Yeah. Satsuki's probably a character, you know. Please. Now, at anime conventions, There'll be men wearing masks like this and wigs, full outfits, their skin covered in flesh, kind of material, yeah. and they're like these giant anime girls. They're pretty remarkable. Like you'd want to, like, look at them. They're eye catching. Yeah, sounds like a real wild scene. That mask was like, how much do you think? Sixty dollars. <laughs> Eighty. Eighty. That's pretty close. It was very close. I'm yeah. really impressed. For something I don't really know about, that's pretty good. Come on. Oh, what are these? Do you remember masks? these? Do you yeah. remember these? Yeah. Like these about, were so about popular. Six years ago. Everybody. Like, yeah. And now when I take it out, and I think about it. First of all, I was an early adopter to the horse head mask. I was like, oh, there's a horse head mask. Okay. Then I got 
all of the Godfather jokes. Did you ever see the Godfather? Yeah. The horse in the bed, right? Yeah. Okay. And that was like, ha ha, I'm over it. And then all of a sudden, like fraternity boys would be like beer guzzling, so it's out of rotation. Okay, all right, we gotta put that on. This is one of my new favorites. Not only because of like, it's so patriotic. Yeah. But it's really stunning. The texture on it is great. Touch it. You like it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it fits Wait, rubber. let me put it on, then you can. Okay. Oh. Yeah, all new. I mean, it's just a rubber texture. I love wearing this mask because I can make him talk a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Can you see my mouth moving inside? Yeah, I can. That's grotesque. So as we leave the mask on, because we only have about a minute left, okay. but uh, what projects are you currently working on or if people want to find you on your social media? I would love uh, it if people want to connect with me on Instagram. I love to connect with people on Instagram. It's my name. I don't know if you're going to write Ezra Weiss. Yeah, well, it, they're it's probably walking in on, name. on YouTube and then it just says right below it. Ezra Weiss. Yeah, Ezra Weiss interview is what this is going to say. Ezra Weiss, that's how they'll find yeah. me on Instagram. I love meeting people. Yeah. I love meeting you. It's love great meeting you, Ezra. We didn't even talk about the Ladybug show you're on oh, or any oh of gosh, that. Please mention it quick. What's the name of this? It's called Miraculous. Miraculous. Colin. Colin. Tales Wait. of Ladybug, Ladybug and Cat Noir. You said it great. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my yeah. favorite projects I've ever worked on. Yeah. And I, we won't talk about it. We don't have time. Well, you'll come back and we'll talk about it. Probably I won't. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're not you gonna come back. You'll never have me back. Yeah, well, he called me racist. He made me pet his head. We, you'd be like, this guy's <laughs> a jackass. Hey, compared to some of the other guests, this was you know maybe up there with the things. You can't um, compare me to other but, guests. <laughs> while you throw to your listeners. Okay. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. This is Adam Papagan and uh, Dog Man, uh, reminding you there's a place you can go, and it's your mind. Good night.